Greetings everyone. Today's project is to build a mini subwoofer out of acrylic. Just for fun. I just want to see what I could come up with here. So I didn't want to spend a lot of money. You know me. I have a budget. So I was looking around for drivers that might work and modeling them and see what they come up with. First I was looking at small 4 inch drivers and I was just not getting what I wanted. So I decided to move up in size a little bit. So after modeling it, I found something I thought would work pretty well and I bought this. It was like 45 bucks. It is 15 centimeters or about six inches. Here's the brand by Satin, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Four ohms, so it'll work with my low voltage low power amps. I think it says this thing is rated 50 watts. That means to me not to go over about 25 watts. The box modeling software I'm using is called WinISD. It's been around forever and it's pretty comprehensive in what it can do. And this video is not a how to use the software. I'm just kind of showing my process, what I've done. So when I put in the driver parameters and you know it gave me the curves here and the box size and everything. Well, down here is the volume of the box. It started out at 0.17 something and a tuning of around 51. Well, that's okay, but I wanted to make the box a little bit larger and see if I can tune it a bit lower see what would happen and this is what I get my 3 dB down point is now around 44 Hertz before it was around 51 so that's a significant gain now I could even try a larger box but you know I don't want to get it too large and you start getting diminishing returns when you do that so yeah I think this is a very good design right here with the box size and the port tuning. The beauty of the software is it allows you to look at different aspects of the design and one important thing is the air velocity in the port. If it goes too fast you'll start getting a chuffing effect and according to its help file this little manual it includes it says to keep it under 17 meters per second and yeah we're clearly under that and I have the power set for 20 watts because I would never use this thing any more than that so yeah 20 watts we're running around 15 so we're clearly within that limit and it also helped me calculate the size of my vent I'm using a slot vent. I'm using scrap acrylic. I have strips of acrylic that are five inches wide. So that's going to be one dimension of the box. So I chose five and kind of fudged around with this number to get the vent length to work with the size of the enclosure I'm using and also keep the port velocity under control. So this ends up being somewhere around 14 inches or so. So I have these strips of acrylic left over, quarter inch thick, about five inches wide after running them through the joiner. That's one reason I kind of constrained myself on that size of building this box. And then I've come up with the design. So uh, here's the box. This is just a support that's going to a brace that's going to run along the inside and there's the port and that's the size I came up with so it's a fairly compact subwoofer and through the magic of video editing I uh, already somewhat built the thing so you can see here and of course these are going to be the top and bottom panels so I have to glue this thing and make sure I carefully measure. You know that 
the width of that port is very critical or it's going to throw off the tuning. Now obviously it's always going to be five inches because that's the size, that's the height of this acrylic here. But, you know, this is kind of loose right now until I glue it. And I got to you know, make sure that it's very close to that when I get it glued. So I'll probably tack it down in spots before I totally glue it out to make sure that it's uh, at the proper spacing here. In another video, I built a turntable cover out of acrylic and I kind of went through my process of how I do that. So you might want to watch that to see how I work with acrylic. But I'm not going to do that in this video because it's going to take a lot of time. I cut out the hole for the woofer. The woofer has an insulating strip on the back so I don't have to deal with that so that's handy. I just use my scroll saw to cut that instead of a circle jig. I thought it was a little easier to do so did it that way. Next up is binding posts. So I scavenged some binding posts off this old professional audio equipment. Apogee sound. So I drilled holes and I'll mount that there. I even had some wire I could use. So I'll get this all cleaned up, assembled, and I'll be ready for testing. And there it is, all assembled. Got the masking peeled off, arms in the way. I like to find some black screws, but that's the only thing I have. So now we will do the one watt test. Because if it don't make good base at one watt, it's going to suck everywhere else. So I got the little amplifier here. I will connect it up and we'll see what it can do. Okay, I will record some samples of this thing here. I moved to the floor. Everything rattles on the bench. So I went to battery power with a little amp. And I will use my music recorder and the little microphone here because it picks up bass much better than the built-in microphone and the camcorder here. And we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, there's the recording samples. I do apologize. You can hear some pops in a couple places in the playback because, well, with that hypersensitive mic, I did clip the sound recorder. But anyhow, what do I think of the thing? Well, pretty much what I expected. It's not really sensitive, but it does deliver decent bass. It doesn't go dig really deep, but you get pretty good low bass. In the playback of the 30 hertz tone, I could hear a little port turbulence there. Overall, it does kind of have that ported sound to it. doesn't have any stuffing inside. It's kind of form over function with the clear acrylic box. But, yeah, it works pretty well. I'm going to hook it up to an amplifier that can deliver more power to it and see what it sounds like there. Okay, I'm hooked up to the universal amp here. Pushing probably a whopping 15 watts into the thing. Yeah, you can hear a lot of noise from the cabinet here. I think a lot of it is port noise. And that noise is kind of resonating inside the chamber. Probably would benefit with stuffing. 
yeah you can get quite a breeze you can see the uh, the woofer displacement as it uncouples from the chamber when it's uh, below the tuned frequency this does have quite a bit of throw but I can also hear the uh, harmonics from the distortion because the woofers starting to exceed its limits is X max so yeah it's uh, somewhat disappointing in the noise that it makes but I mean, that's par for the course, I guess. You'd have to maybe go for a wider port. Though the software said I was within limits. I think it, the port needs to be flared or something like that and have stuffing in there to soak up some of that sound from inside the chamber. I'm going to perform an impedance sweep on this thing here. So using the Quant Asylum there, I set up a little board. Not the most ideal thing, but yeah, it'll work well enough. So I'm using the amplifier, the board here with the 0.1 ohm resistor and the Quant Asylum. And here's the results. Ignore these numbers and the red line. That's part of the phase plot, which I cut off when I zoomed in to the impedance part here. So you see the double bumps here, typical of a ported cabinet. And in between them, at the trough here, is the tuned frequency. Well, we wanted to be at 47, but it seems that we're a little bit low. So I'm not sure where I went wrong. I also tested using the field tech, which is a function generator running it through the amplifier and adjusting the frequency until the woofer displacement was minimal. You can just put your finger on it and feel that it's not moving much. And it pretty much coincides with this. I'm measuring around 44 hertz doing that method. So yeah, these both seem low compared to the 47 that I should be getting. So yeah, I must have went wrong somewhere. Well, I can check the box dimensions and make sure everything was calculated to design and the port length and all that good stuff and see what happened. But I'm going to wrap it up here. As far as the port noise goes, you know, you hook a small speaker up and play pure sine wave tones through it. You're always going to hear something. It's just the way it is. If you ever listen to Wilston's Audio Lab when he's recording subwoofers, with ports you can always hear the port noise and the distortion and the noise in the box that comes through the ports it's it's just par for the course it's the way it is normally that's going to be masked by the music you're playing that plus transient response is one reason why I like sealed speakers though you just can't get a lot of bass with a sealed system at this size it's going to be quite a bit bigger but anyhow, I'll wrap it up here, and thanks for watching.